This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we'll begin discussing exporting out of InDesign. If you'd like to follow along, go to File, Open, and in the Sample Files folder, scroll down to 1901, Exporting Acrobats for Print and just click Open. First, I'm just going to scroll over a little bit to the right, so when I open the Acrobat dialog window, we'll still be able to see the layout. And then, in order to export an Acrobat for print, I'm going to go to File, Export, name the file. By default, it's just going to pick up the name of the InDesign file and put a .pdf at the end, figure out a place to save it, and make sure that for format, Adobe PDF print is selected, and just hit Save. And in the dialog window that opens, we're going to go through the settings. First, let's talk about presets. Any preset that has brackets on it is actually a default, and they come with InDesign. I'm going to choose first high quality print and it actually tells me what it's for in the description area. It's for printing on desktop printers or proofers. Let me choose another one. Smallest file size. Smallest file size is for on-screen use or for emailing the Acrobat, possibly for client approvals of your layout. Now I'm going to choose press quality. That's an Acrobat for printing on a printing press. Does that mean that if I choose this, I'm done? If I wanted to send my Acrobat to a printer? Absolutely not. You really have to talk to your printer to get all of the settings that he needs. It's possible that press quality is exactly what he needs, but you have to ask. Let's go through the settings. In the pages area, I can choose which pages I want to be part of the Acrobat all pages, or I can pick a range, type a single page in here if I want, and I can also check spreads if I want pages 2 and 3 next to each other, and 4 and 5, and so on and so forth. I'm just going to go to all. Now, this is interesting. We're using press quality, yet optimize for fast web view is checked. I'm going to uncheck that, and you can see right away it says press quality modified. If I wanted to see the Acrobat after exporting, this would open it automatically. View PDF after exporting. Let's move on to the next section, which is compression. What is this about? Well, in order to keep the size of the Acrobat small, yet have the highest possible quality, it's going to take any images that are very high resolution at the size that they're being used and make them a lower resolution, still 300 in this case. So what it would do for color images is use something called bicubic downsampling to 300 pixels per inch at the size that the image is being used for any images above 450. So with images such as Chris's, which are very high resolution at a big size, Let's say I'm shrinking it down to 50% of the size of the original image. Well, if it's 300 pixels per inch at the original size, and I'm shrinking it down to 50%, that is actually 600 pixels per inch at that size that it's being used. So it would take that image, make a JPEG at maximum quality at 300 pixels per inch. It's going to perform a similar operation for grayscale images as well as monochrome images. Crop image data to frames. Basically, what that's going to do is any part of the image that is cropped, it's not going to include that data, which is just going to make the file smaller. So that's a good thing. Compress text and line art. Well, here's something you really need to talk to your printer about. Some output devices are not capable of understanding compressed text. So if you send an Acrobat that uses this, it's possible that your printer may not be able to output. 
give your printer a call. Marks and bleeds. I can include all of my printer's marks. Or just crop marks if I want, or bleed marks, registration marks, color bars, page information. I'm going to leave crop marks, but you really should talk to your printer. Use document bleed settings. If I set up bleed with this document, it's automatically going to pick up those settings and use it in the Acrobat to include the bleed. Output. Ah, another good reason to call your printer. There's no way of knowing what your printer's destination profile is. You have to talk to them. And if you can't get the information, use no color conversion. That will leave your colors as is and not include any profiles. Let me go to advanced. The one area that's important seems to be grayed out here. That's transparency flattener. And that's because it's making it into an Acrobat 5 file. Acrobat 5 had transparency. There's no reason to flatten that transparency. But if I needed to save it as an Acrobat 4 file, there was no transparency in Acrobat 4. So I would have to pick a preset. Being that it's going to press, I'm going to choose high resolution. And what this would do is any place the transparency comes in contact with something behind it. It will make a composite JPEG that matches the appearance of the transparency without it being transparent. And it will include that JPEG in the Acrobat. Let's go to security. I have one word about using security, and that's don't. Unless, of course, you're working on a top secret project and you want to make sure that nobody can open this without a password. Well, that's the problem with security. If you include security, passwords will be necessary to open the document or to print it or edit it. And believe me, if you include security and you forget your password, you will not be able to open the document in Acrobat. You also will not be able to place it as a graphic in InDesign. And you won't be able to open it in Illustrator or open it in Photoshop as a rasterized document. So don't use it unless you have to. Summary is just a summary of everything, all of the settings that were used to create this Acrobat. You can actually save the summary. What you may want to do is have your printer save a summary and email it to you so you can use all of those same settings that the printer is using. And then save a preset and add it to the list of Adobe PDF presets so anytime you're using that printer or a particular magazine, you will not have to go through this dialog box again. I'm just going to hit cancel. In upcoming lessons, we're going to continue discussing the export features of InDesign.